So here we are at the Carol, Carl Jansky Very Large Array. Now, the visitor center is apparently closed. Why? I don't know. They've been closed since COVID happened, but to still be closed because of COVID is kind of ridiculous. They don't have a gate. They don't say keep out. So I'm just going to drive around and see what we can see back here and maybe get a close-up view of a dish or two, possibly. Um, maybe even the maintenance shack over there. I've been to the VLA before. It's been a few years, but I've been here before. And they have a shack back there where they keep one dish in. And um, if one of these out here in the array fails, they can swap out that one dish in the maintenance shack for any of these. And we'll get a close-up look here, I'm sure, at how they move them around. Um, they are on railroad wheels, and there are sets of track out here in a Y shape. And they can move the dishes along any axis of the Y, any of the three axes of the Y, and spread them out either further apart or closer together. And like I say, they can, they can take any malfunctioning dish back to the maintenance shack and replace it with uh, the one in the shack that's been refurbished. So there's one of the dishes over there. And we are coming up on uh, the railroad tracks where they cross the road. Since there's no traffic on this road, I will stop and uh, take some video at the tracks. Give you some idea just how they uh, they move these things around. Because I was here when they were still allowing visitors years ago. And you could go out and you could get a close look at a lot of stuff. Plus they had a pretty interesting visitor center. And they had a, a glassed-in gallery where you could uh, you could see what was going on inside the control center for this thing. It was mainly just a big computer room. You know, most astronomy is done remotely these days. The astronomers don't aren't here. They could be anywhere in the world, you know? So, uh, there's just technicians and, and whatnot there. But uh, it was kind of interesting to see in there. Okay, let me get out and we'll look at uh, what we got here. Well, it's very windy. I hope you can hear me over the wind noise. So we're looking down one axis of the Y. It goes off into the distance for miles and miles. I see at least three more dishes off that way. And then looking back this way, we're looking towards the center of the Y. And then over there, there's another axis of the Y going off that way. And there's another axis of it going off that way. So what they have here is a lot of dishes spread out along a Y shape. And what they can do is they can um, connect them together to make basically one big dish as big as this valley is. We're sitting in a valley surrounded by hills. We are very, very far from anything resembling serious civilization. There's very little radio noise here. And uh, the hills that surround this valley block more of the radio noise. There you can see the hills over there. And make this an ideal place for radio astronomy. Listening to the universe out there and making uh, pretty pictures out of what uh, the radio waves that these, uh, these dishes pick up and learning a lot about the universe. Now this place is named after Carl Jansky. 
He was a pioneering radio astronomer. In fact, he has a unit of energy named after him, the Jansky. If you have a unit of energy named after you, you know you've made it in the field of science, okay? So Jansky did a lot of good work. So, yeah, and the, the film Contact was filmed here too, where uh, Jodie Foster was supposedly hearing from aliens out here and got the plans to uh, build a, a device to meet them. Yeah, so that was filmed out here. So anyway, I'm going to drive around a little bit and see if I can get closer to any of these dishes. I think there might be one up close to the highway that we can get a good look at. Okay, we'll go down here and see how close we can get to this one by the highway. It looks like it's pretty close to the road, though it's so big distances can be deceiving. So yeah, I don't know why they're still closed. Their website doesn't explain why they're closed. It just says, we're closed, basically. You know, it's like, don't bother us, we're busy. Um, I suspect, I could be wrong, but I suspect they may not have the staff here to handle the public anymore. You know, after being closed for a couple of years due to COVID, they probably had to let some people go, and maybe they just haven't rehired you know, the public relations staff, the people to keep the visitor center up and uh, and talk to the dumb tourists who, who come through the door and that sort of thing. That's, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt and assuming that's why they're still closed. You know, that there's, you know, nothing else going on, like they just don't want to deal with the public anymore or they're still so paranoid about COVID at this late date, who knows, you know, who knows. But like I said, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. So we'll roll over here and see how good a look we can get at this dish. And um, we'll get a look at down this, this arm of the Y. This is a different arm of the Y than the one we just looked down before. These dishes are huge, absolutely huge. I remember being able to walk right up to them and look at them basically back back in the days when you still could do that sort of thing out here and uh, see them in the uh, repair shed and stuff let's uh, come over here and look at the historical marker. Might find that interesting too. And then we'll go look at the dish. Well, this is interesting. The guardrail next to the historical marker has <laughs> every imaginable sticker on it. Too bad I don't have one to add. I don't have any stickers with me. Huh. So pause the video if you want to read that in detail. Go around and look at the other side. I don't know if there's anything on it. Oh, same thing. Okay. Let's go see about this dish. I'll hike over and see how close I can get. So, unfortunately, this is apparently as far as we can go without committing a felony, which I don't feel like doing today. So, there's one of the dishes up close and personal. At least as close as we can get. So they're all on pads, but they have transporters that can take them off the pads and put them on the rails and move them to different pads so that they can spread them out. 
sometimes they want the dishes closer together and sometimes they want them further apart depending on what they're doing and of course if a dish malfunctions then they need, they'll put it on the rails and they'll take it to the shed which is over there and if I still while I zoom in maybe you can see that there is a dish in that shed over there that dish is ready to go to replace any of the others that uh, fail. And they'll move the failed one in there and fix it. Okay, here's a slightly steadier view of that shed with the spare dish in it. Off in the distance, probably a couple miles away. Hard to tell. Distances are very deceiving out here. Um, over here is the control center for the VLA and the center of the Y. See the dishes are kind of bunched up out there because that's the center of the Y over there. And the arms lead out in three different directions. One going one going to the to the right, one going to the left, and one coming right at me. Those are the three arms of it. So, all these dishes, you'll notice, are pointing in the same direction. They are tracking a target in the sky, moving very slowly to compensate for the Earth's rotation, to keep the target in view. Radio astronomy is a type of astronomy you can do anytime. You can do it during the day, you can do it during the night, you can do it under clouds. The sky doesn't have to be clear, the sky doesn't have to be dark. You can do radio astronomy anytime. And they are doing radio astronomy right now. They are tracking some target. All these dishes are pointed at some target. And they're all moving very slowly. In fact, the wind is making it hard to hear it. But during breaks in the wind and breaks in the traffic behind me, I could actually hear the hum of the motors in that thing very slowly moving it as it's tracking whatever target they have it pointed at. And from the shadow on the dish, I would say whatever target they're pointed at is not very far away from the sun. So yes, I really wish that I could have uh, got into the visitor center and showed you guys that. Because it's, it's quite fascinating. But uh, that was not to be on this trip. But at least we got a little bit of a look at how things work out here at the uh, Carl Jansky Very Large Array. At least as close a look as we can get without breaking any laws. So, I hope you found this video at least a little bit interesting, educational, inspiring, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. And um, check out my second channel, ElectroGeek64. There's good stuff going on there too. And I will see you in the next video. And who knows where that will be. Bye.